85 years ago, the Federal Riders Project was created to provide jobs for out-of-work riders during the Great Depression. Well, now, riders across the country are once again facing Depression-era unemployment levels. So can the government save American riders this time around? L.A. Times critic at large David Kippen sure thinks so. He joined us along with Congressman Ted Lieu to share how David's wild idea of reviving the project is now a proposed bill. Great to have you both. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm going to start with you, David. It wasn't that many months ago you were here and you said, I have this great idea. And it's because our writers are suffering. Remind everybody how hard it's been, not just because of the pandemic, but because of the shrinking of the newspaper business. Oh, yeah. The, the journalists have been in a bad way since long before the pandemic hit. Um, because of the exodus of print advertising to, um, to online and uh, just the general economic hardship uh, under, you know, uh, uh, befalling the entire journalism industry, um, there were... I, I think they've said uh, up to 20% of um, jobs lost in the industry just in the space of a few years. And now, I don't know if you heard, um, with the purchase of Tribune Publishing by a company, a hedge fund that has a reputation for just gutting newspapers, uh, things are even more dire. So you were here and your idea was? My idea was rev up the Federal Writers Project again. Um, this was uh, an amazing project that just seems like an idea whose time has returned to us. It would put writers, not just journalists, but writers, editors, photographers back to work and maybe just try to knit up some of the social fabric that's frayed so badly over the last several years. Congressman, how'd you get involved? I an email from my friend Billy Ray, who's also a writer and a director, with David's idea. And we looked into the Federal Writers Project that happened during their New Deal. And we thought, why not copy success? And so we've now introduced legislation of the Federal Writers Project for the 21st century. And it's designed not only to help writers uh, get back on their feet and get jobs, but also to help newsrooms, especially in small towns and rural areas where they've had a loss of newsrooms in recent years. Congressman, take us back in time and tell us how the federal government helped writers in the past. Yes, so uh, under FDR, one of the reasons they did their Federal Writers Project is not only because a lot of people didn't have jobs, including writers, but also they wanted journalists and writers and historians to capture what happened during the Great Depression. So similarly here, we had this traumatic once in a generation pandemic, and it'd be really good for people to cover all these stories across America. And I'd like to know, for example, well, how did the life of a nurse change or a grocery store clerk? And how did people in big cities and small towns experience this pandemic? And this is something that this writer's project bill can do in addition to employing a lot of writers. And David, in addition to employing a lot of writers, there were some breakout stars at the last go round. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The first Federal Writers Project birthed the careers of, uh, well, the Nobel Prize winner Saul Bellow, for one, but also um, Richard Wright, who wrote Native Son while he was on the project. Uh, I think in some cases, even during business hours, but it all worked out. Um, he wound up writing a novel that changed the course of 20th century American literature. John Cheever, Zora Neale Hurston, the great author of Their Eyes Were Watching God. And, um, uh, uh, you know, so many of these, actually, it promoted friendships between writers who would never otherwise have met. Saul Bellow and Ralph Ellison um, were born, uh, um, you know, uh, states and states apart and worlds apart because of their backgrounds. The one African-American, the one, the other a Jewish poor kid from, from Chicago, and they wound up living together and writing together and becoming each other's best editor. Congressman, we have spent a lot of money on relief packages in the last month. Is there an appetite for this? And if so, how much money are you proposing? I believe there absolutely is. I'm very pleased that the American Rescue Plan is now law, and that plan has helped American families and businesses put America back on track and to recover from this pandemic. 
At the same time, we lost millions of jobs, including writing jobs. And what this bill would do is authorize $60 million to go help writers as well as newsrooms. Not only would we create a lot of jobs, also we would have these people capturing what happened during this pandemic. So it serves a two very useful purposes. So what's the next step? Uh, the next step would, would be to get it passed through the House of Representatives. We're trying to see if we can secure bipartisan support. And then once it gets in the Senate, the Senate works in mysterious ways. Uh, so <laughs> we've got to uh, work on that as well. But the first step is to try to get out of the House. David, are you hopeful? And is it just enough to have your crazy idea see this kind of support? Well, I mean, let me thank the congressman publicly. I mean, this is the way it's supposed to work. A citizen gets a half-decent idea, it finds its way to his elected representative, and a year later, literally a year later, um, it's a bill. It's a bill on the floor of the House of Representatives. It gives me, if, if that can happen, then sailing through the Congress onto the president's desk should be the easy part. David Kiffin and Congressman Ted Lieu, thank you so much for being here and good luck. Thank you.